And we're live. Jane, thank you for joining me on this. I was going to say sunny Friday, but I don't know about you. It's been pouring with rain in Birmingham. So yeah, it's pretty drizzly here in Worcester and very grey. Very yeah. grey. Let's thank pretend it's sunny. Well. Yes, let's pretend it's sunny and bring the sunshine ourselves. Exactly. I'm bringing the sun with me. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's a good in actually to what you do because. I know. You know, it's all about bringing the colour and, you know, yeah. excitement. So, um, Jane, would you do me the honour of introducing yourself and what you do? And then I will, we'll, we'll get chatting. Lovely. Thanks, Catherine. Um, my name's Jane Brooke. I am a personal stylist, image consultant, colour analyst, whatever you want to call me, with um, House of Colour. I trained with House of Colour 13 and a half years ago after it sort of changed my life without being too X Factor about this. It really did. It was, yeah. it was a real transformation for me. And I loved it. And when the opportunity arose, I bought a franchise, trained with House of Colour, and I've never looked back, actually. I, you know, I just love what I do day in, day out. It's okay. amazing. We're all wearing clothes. You've got clothes on now. So let's make them count. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, there's so much to unpack there, right? I've literally thought of about four questions already. <laughs> so if you think about it from, from, so let me tell you a little story. A couple of weeks ago, I co-hosted a live kind of. Um, All that? Red suit. Event. Yes. The red suit. Suit. Yeah. yeah. I would never, ever, ever have picked a red suit ever and in part that's sort of I'm entrenched in navy dark colors because that's what the, the, that's what the legal profession expects right yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I thought this isn't that and I'm a bit nervous and I've never done this before so I could either play it safe because I feel comfortable and go for the navy suit or I could just go completely off key and go for the red suit. And I actually ended up phoning a friend last minute and I was like, can you come and meet me in the ball ring? Because I want you to see, because it's not the same on a photo. I was like, I want you to see the suit, tell me what you think. So she rocks up and she's like, no, oh my God. She styled it for me, she picked the t-shirt, she got the shoes and I, I felt phenomenal. I had so many compliments on that red suit. I would never have worn that in a million years normally, but I felt like I needed to give myself a bit of a, like, come on, you can do this and you are confident and you're going to wear a red suit and it's going to be fine. You know, yeah. so I do think it does make a difference. So, so just take me back. You were basically a customer of House of Colour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was. Talk, um, about that, like, talk about the transformation for you around well, what it's, happened. It's sort of, my, I haven't got, um, you know, a story. I hear a lot of, in business, we hear a lot of people's stories and a lot of people's stories are so inspiring of, of the obstacles they've overcome. Mine isn't like that. I don't, my, I was okay. I had a fine life. Yeah. I was, I was all right. I um, worked as an accountant. That was great. Um, I was married. I'm married young. I have, I've got two daughters um, and everything was just tootling along. Everything was just fine. And then I reached a point sort of about in my mid thirties and I thought, Do you know what? is this it? Is this really <laughs> it? And yeah. I decided actually that there probably was more out there. And so I, um, things hadn't been right for a while and, and and I split with my husband. And at that point it was like, right, I can do the things. I, I got married, like I said, I got married young. I didn't go to uni. I thought, wow, this is my time. Um, every other weekend when he's got the kids, I can be living my best life. And what happened was it was, it didn't unfold as I expected it to. Although I, I'd been with him for so long, and from I met him at sixteen. Right. We were very entrenched as a as a couple. I had, and again, some of these things I say, I do think, oh, for goodness sake, get over yourself. But I just, I, I formed my identity to him. I have yeah. that tendency to be very much a sort of chameleon. I can just fit in, and I, I will sort of mold. So I molded to him, yeah. and I didn't even know what I liked to watch on the telly or anything. So I, I suddenly started to feel a bit lost, and then. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who sounds like your friend had that natural sense of style, looked amazing, yeah. had confidence and was just everywhere we went, you know, people would talk to her and I was like, oh, I'll just sit here then, shall I? I'll hold your coat. Yeah. Um, and I just felt my self-esteem, my confidence just went lower and lower and lower and lower. And I thought oh, almost I'm the opposite of what you would expect to happen when yes, you're coming out of a relationship. Woo, yeah, this is the time. Let's get out there. Let's have live my best life. And it didn't. I just nosedived and I just decided, right, you know, 
forget it. Life, life, life should have stayed fine. I should have, I, I really was at that point and I sort of lost myself in my work and my girls. And then one day this friend, I tried to dress like her. That did not work. Yeah. Warning to everybody. Don't try and dress like someone else. Like, <laughs> she was, she is, so I, I, you know, I'm sitting here with a razor blade necklace on. Um, I'm big and bold and boo out there. She needs small feminine details. She okay. wears soft, smoky pinks and greys. I wear vibrant lines and yeah. orange. So very different. So when I tried to be her, I just looked and felt sort of disassociated really it was like I wasn't me mm. and there's so much to be said for your clothes giving you confidence but your own confidence not yeah. trying to assume someone else's sort of skin if you like yeah um so <laughs> I just sort of uh, thought I can't at the time I didn't know it was the clothes that were wrong I thought it was me I thought I'm just okay. using yeah. I can't do anything I, can't I wear anything, anything. Yeah, look terrible. She yeah. looks great in them, so it must be me. I'm flawed in some way. So I just closed off. Um, and then she came to me and said, I'm going to go and have my colours analysed. Um, do, do you want to, you know, are you interested? I was like, no. Yeah, that sounds what like a bit rubbish. Exactly, yeah. I come from an accountancy background. I'm very logical. I need mm. facts. I need science. Like colour oh. analysis. I know, some middle-aged woman going, oh, put this lip on, I like <laughs> Now, hello, I am oh, that middle-aged woman. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I was like, nah, nah, I'm out. Yeah, why would I spend that amount of money on that? Uh, so she went off, took her sister, went off and came back and looked even better. And you thought, oh, no. Oh, no, I know. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so then she started explaining it and I was like, maybe there is something in this but at that point I didn't like to ever admit I might be wrong I was very no 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 I no and so I had to sort of you were still a no so I was still a no and then she wow. just looked better and better and I thought oh I'm gonna have to I'm, I'm, I said well I suppose there might be something in it then um <laughs> a big very begrudgingly and then it I went, works for me but I'll, I'll yeah, but I'll, uh, yeah and to be honest and I see this a lot in my studio um, I sat in front of the mirror, I booked, I went to Cheltenham, you have to go with no makeup on. My hair was dyed blonde at the time. I'd been dyed blonde for years and years. I've looked yeah. very different. Um, and I sat in front of the mirror and I remember them, <laughs> the consultant doing all the drapes. We have 100, I've got 144 bits of precision dyed nylon downstairs that I use to make sure we get an accurate analysis. So she was doing all of these drapes and I was like, oh, it just look terrible and everything. I can't see it. And my friend had come with me and she's like, no, that looks really nice. And eventually I got to the stage where I could say, and I, I really laugh about it now because I'm just like, for goodness sake. Um, I went, I suppose that doesn't look quite as bad. I still don't look very good, but it's not quite as bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I sort of, I sort of got it and I started, she, she did the makeup, she did the lipstick, the lipstick. And I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to do lipstick. And I hated that. I looked at myself. Just not in the right headspace for this at all. Was, you were like, no. a bad place at that time. <laughs> um, and I looked at my the lipstick, and all I could see when I looked in the mirror was my lips. I was like, oh, oh, this is bright. This is really bright. It was actually this lipstick that she put me in. Um, and but I thought, in for a penny, in for a pound is very much my philosophy. You yeah. know, you're all in or you're you're out. Yeah. I was like, right, bye bye it all, put it all on, something's going to change. And as I left her studio, I walked out into Cheltenham High Street and um, somebody sort of smiled at me and looked, looked at me and, and I said, see, they're all looking at me because I'm wearing lipstick in the day. And um, <laughs> day. <laughs> day. I said, what? I'm like, I a crime. <laughs> um, and my friend said, they're looking because you look nice. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? That didn't even enter my head that that was a possibility. No. I just be looking at me because who she thinks she's weird. Is. Yeah, you're weirdo. Yeah. Um, and so we went and went shopping, and I could not see. I got my little swatch that we, everyone, well, everyone gets an amazing fan now. I should have bought one as a prop. Okay, but I haven't got one of those with me. So you get a swatch of colours. Yeah, you get a swatch of colours. So um, so you can go shopping and use this swatch to find the colors that coordinate with your palette so okay. we have four different seasons i am what we term an autumn so i need rich warm earthy mm -hmm. colors 
and I'm within that palette, we even subdivide more. And I need really, I need the bright, vibrant colours of autumn. So I'm what we call a vibrant autumn. So I look great in, I look amazing in khaki and olives. But I really come to life when I've got a lime green on or an orange. Yeah, hence <laughs> the two colours you picked today. Yeah, I know. Um, so, so yeah, and and then I started making the changes mm. little by little. Then it still wasn't quite clicking. Um, and I realised that I was still trying to wear the wrong styles of clothes. I was still trying to wear okay. jewellery and, you know, ditzy floral prints. I don't do that. I don't, I'm, like I said, yeah. big and bold. I'm not a floral print kind of person. I Some feel like I'm wearing a curtain. Yes. Yeah. 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 And again, it can be to do with the scale. I can do floral, but they've got to be big in your face florals, not the, the florals that we've seen around on the high street for a yeah. long time. Um, so I went and had my style analysed and I was like, oh, now it makes sense. Oh. And I turned it to some kind of house colour junkie and <laughs> went and did everything. Like this. Wardrobe edits, yes, please. You're shopping, yes, please. I was like, <laughs> everything. He's like, yes, yes, I'm in, I'm in. I must <laughs> I it's complete, like 180, isn't it? From no, it's all low no. rubbish to like, no, I'm completely in, I'm I sold. Am. This is like, yeah. It is, and that is very much my personality, and I think that's reflected in in the way I dress as well. Yeah. There's no half measures with me, you yeah. know. I've either I'm on, I'm on the second bottle of wine, or I'm on a diet coke. We we don't we don't do just one or two. All of that thing, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and I, I understanding that has been quite powerful for me, and mm. that's through the whole house color process. Um, and yeah, and then and then the opportunity arose because of um, I mean. Who wouldn't want to start a business in a recession? I mean, like that, Catherine, you know, great, why not? So, that's for me. <laughs> that's what I did. I was like, look, go from accountancy background. And when the recession hit, my, my job got cut from five days a week to two. Oh, so, I thought, oh, what can I do? Yeah, I've just learned to dress myself. I know. I won't bother with business. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do this. <laughs> so, yeah. Literally, the thought process. Oh my god, I love that though. That you were like, I believe so much in this yeah. and the transformation. Yeah. That I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it, right? Yeah. And I and I did, and I genuinely, I love every single day. It's just well, probably a bit of a lie, bit of the bit of the admin. You know, yeah. Grief, honestly, that's still. Um, there's a lot of admin involved. Right. right. Admin heavy, isn't it? But when I've got somebody in my studio or I'm in the shops with someone or I'm delving in someone's wardrobe, I'm joy. In heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love that. So, so talk me through if I was to come to you as a client, what yeah. would the process be to get my colour analysed? Get your colours analysed. Um, I would ask you to come with no, well, I would, I would make sure that you either come with no makeup on or I take your makeup off because right. we need to look at your skin. Right. This is a scientific process. It's based on research. It's not just me flicking a bit of nylon around going, oh, yeah, you look lovely in pink, Catherine. Off you go. <laughs> it, <laughs> there is a lot more sort of in depth to that. It is based on your skin tone having a, a color um, deep within it. It's not, um, it's your undertones of your skin are either tinged more yellow or more blue. Right. So we need to find out what that is. Okay. And then we need to find out whether you've got brighter tones in your skin or more muted tones in your skin. And that way I use one of I use a sequence of my 144 drapes to work that out. Um, you know, it, 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 you can see the color wheel behind me yeah. that uh, represents our four seasons. Um, and the top half of the wheel are the warm based colors. They've got more yellow in them. Mm. And the bottom half have got more blue in them. So I fall into the top half of the wheel. I've got more yellow in the undertones of my skin. You can't see this just by looking at someone's skin. It is the undertones. Right, okay. And there are, it, it also is one of the things that I find quite interesting is it is a wheel. So you can be on the cusp of one season, and that's why okay. you need to do an in-depth process. Some people are much easier to analyse than others. Um, mm. Other people really tricky and we really have to make sure we've got you in exactly the right place that's interesting so can someone span two or are you only ever sitting in one you only ever sit in one um because it doesn't it doesn't give you any it doesn't give you any sort of advantage to have two because right. it's really confusing sometimes there's a quote i read people sort of 
bobbing all over the place. People oh, sometimes yes. say that color analysis can be, they feel it quite, it's quite limiting and there's a certain number of colors. In actual fact, it tends to expand the colors we wear. But what happens is that constraint of your palette allows you to breathe more creativity with the way you combine the colors and okay. how much more sort of creative you can get. Um, because most of us aren't great at, at putting different colors together. We tend to go for black or navy and a color. But yeah. if you put another color in, it just suddenly starts to come to life and you look more interesting and um it's yeah it, it's absolutely fascinating once you're analyzed and you are analyzed correctly and i am going to put that proviso in mm. then you will never change season so i always have been an autumn i always will be an autumn it oh, is based on your 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 sort of your gene makeup if you like your genetic makeup i have two daughters one is an autumn one is a winter right they both are very different but they both really lean into their colors now and it just makes life so easy. I don't, I just discount so many colours because they look, you know, I don't look terrible, but 55, getting on a bit. I, I want to look the best I can, the easiest I can. So right on a, a top. Yeah, this is it. So there are definitely colours that I can put on and I'm like, oh, that is not a good colour on me. It's draining. I bought I bought this beautiful, I'd say silk shirt. I don't think it is really silk. <laughs> But it's kind of like a creamy color with a dark stripe. It's so yeah. lovely on the hanger. Every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, I just look dead. Yeah. Like, look like I've died in yeah. this shirt because it's so draining. It's like my face just merges with the color of the shirt. <laughs> it's just not good at all. Yeah. So that's either you're going to wear it, feel terrible every time you wear it because you've spent the money on it. Or you're not going to wear it, and that's a waste of money in your in your wardrobe. So yeah. if you add up all of those wasted purchases, it more than covers the cost of a, a an analysis with me or you know another house of color consultant. Uh, let alone the effect if you're not feeling good. Let alone the effect it's having on your potential mm. clients because yeah. the. the taking the sort of um, colour analysis on, it first came to prominence in films and TV. Right. So it was used to, and it still is, extensively. You watch most films and there'll be, look, there'll be some element of colour analysis in there or style to manipulate okay. the way we react with the characters. So if you go back and watch Skyfall, they have used colour analysis in that to make Javier Bardem look decidedly dodgy. Because really? him in that, as opposed to him in Eat, Pray, Love, it's like two different men. Oh, my gosh, that's so interesting. So, so do you find yourselves looking at yeah. things and going, oh, that's definitely colour analysis there? Yeah, sure. definitely, yeah. And it's it's not even, you know, some, again, we're very influenced by colours, um, you know, to make us happy. So if you think of, like, La La Land, we've got a lot of bright colours. Barbie, look at Barbie. I mean, it's all the difference in Barbie yeah. Land and the real world is just you know extreme so yeah. we're very very visual and influenced by those kinds of things so when you get the shade of pink right then for your skin tone then it becomes much more powerful i styled people to go and watch the barbie movie <laughs> did you <laughs> some of my clients oh, that's amazing i don't know what to wear okay let's get let's put it together oh, i love that i love that I love have you had a situation where you because you you mentioned that you will you know kind of go into people's wardrobes and pick out the stuff and you know get rid of a load of things have you ever had it where you've literally scrapped a whole wardrobe and been like all of this is more or less a lot of it is yeah uh, there's always a few pieces left and the client what's really interesting is generally speaking the clients know that they those are the pieces they wear and wear and wear and we we all have not all of us the majority have Far too many clothes in our wardrobes because we've oh, yeah. got too many things and we can't exactly. see yeah. what we're reaching for so mm. by clearing it out again having fewer things to choose from allows us to be more creative with them and stop. the pareto principle works with your clothes as well we wear 20 percent, 80 percent of the time yeah i mean there's definitely things that i've got in my wardrobe and some of it is things like you know evening dresses that of course i'm not gonna wear on a daily basis Although my friend who came shopping with me would probably wear them just because she's got them in her wardrobe because she's that person. She literally wears that. sequins on a Wednesday because she feels like wearing sequins on a Wednesday. She's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is definitely a proportion of my wardrobe for sure that I look at and go, oh, no, I don't. 
it's a bit tight or you know it's sort of like the neckline but i'll just put it back in the wardrobe rather than actually just getting rid of it yeah or even just put it somewhere else just having your wardrobe clothes you're actually wearing and then you'll find and then you can swap them back in so i I do this regularly. I do it with my clients. Every six months, we do what we call sort of um, like a, a wardrobe cleanse just in a Facebook group. And we just go through it. I work through the process with them and they they sort, sort it out. Um, or I go in and, and do it for them, obviously. But it's just a way of, of sort of, it's a bit like, a uh, bit of a, an analogy. It's a bit like having your kitchen cupboards and knowing what's in those and being able to put together a meal at short notice. So you want to have those staples in there. And if they've gone past their sell by date, then they need to come out. Yeah. You just need you need to know what's in there. Otherwise, you'll come to put this amazing outfit together and think, oh God, I've got no brown trousers or something. Yeah. Just, it's it's like a little audit. Or maybe it's my accountancy background. I'm very big on fashion maths. <laughs> No, I love that though, right? Because I'm just thinking about the times where I've gone, oh, I really want to wear that skirt, but I don't really know what I've got to go with it. And yeah. oh, I've got a white t-shirt, but I don't, like, could be anywhere. Could be in the wardrobe, could be in the drawer. I've got time to find it. You know, yeah. like all of that stuff. And and I, I, was it you that was talking about the whole um, putting the hangers on one way and turning it the other way when, when you wear it or something? And if Yes, you know, I do do that. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, so if you put them all, uh, when you when you change, if you change your wardrobe over or when you sort your wardrobe out, have all the hangers facing the same way. Every time you wear something, just take it and reverse the hanger. Then you can see easily what you're not wearing. Yeah. So just review it. And yeah, things like evening dresses. Yeah. yeah you're not going to wear all the time unless you're your friend or my daughter. She's, um, well, she, do her baby's due next month, my first grandson. I'm sorry. Oh, um, and we did her baby shower, and she just had an electric blue sequin jumpsuit. Cost her was pregnant. She looked amazing. I bet she did. That's phenomenal. And um, also, where did she get an electric blue sequin jumpsuit from? Because I love a jumpsuit. <laughs> it was Asics. I need that in my life. You do, yes. I'll find out. Send you the Definitely do. <laughs> well, I don't know if blue suits me, you know, right? I mean, this is, I feel this that I was stressful. <laughs> Actually, I, I will say blue will suit you. It's about the shade of blue. It's like oh, okay. so right. I wear sort of tearly kind of kingfishery kind of blue. So it's a very rich, warm, warm based blue. My elder daughter wears an electric blue. If someone's got what we call a spring palette, they'll be wearing more of an aqua. Um, so it's just about the shade of blue. Right. Is it rich, warm, earthy? Is it cool, vivid, bright? that's where it sort of comes in because we can all wear all the colors apart from good old black there's only our winters who look good in black and white interesting because i think i can wear black and actually that's probably the most dominant color in my wardrobe black and navy are the two most dominant colors in my wardrobe yeah, and, yeah. but i don't think i can easily wear a white if it's not paired with another color so it would be interesting actually to see if i'm wrong yeah, but yeah. because usually I would say probably at least 50% of my wardrobe is black. Yeah, and it's a lot of people are. And again, it's it's about how you wear black. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of people who wear black to hide. And then I have other people who wear black confidently. And that can be indicators as to whether it's, it's good or not. Black yeah. is not a great colour for me. I don't possess any black clothes. I have a pair of black gym trainers because they were the ones recommended. That's it. And that's it. I don't wear any other black. I have little bits of black in patterns. There's a bit of black in the pattern on this. But the overwhelming look is rich, warm and earthy. So I wear this. Yeah. I really but feel like I want to have my colours analysed now because I want to know if I'm right. Of course you do. But everyone <laughs> needs to have it done. You need to come and see me. Absolutely. <laughs> so let, let's just talk about the psychology of of Because obviously, you know, it's all it's lovely to kind of feel confident. and not, But actually there's so much more behind the idea of color analysis isn't there and the importance of of feeling confident in the clothes that you wear and you know i think it, it's easy to sort of think you can almost trick yourself yes. into feeling confident but actually it, it's, it's so much so more than that, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm. yeah I, it is i think i think yes there is that thing about fake it till you make it but mm. actually you do need to have some some basis that doesn't always work Mm -hmm. um, color analysis, it, it does help you look at yourself in the mirror slightly differently and more objectively. 
I sort of work with you and I work with a lot of my clients on building their self-talk. So when they're looking in the mirror, they're not talking to themselves badly. They're talking to themselves as if they're talking to a friend. You wouldn't say to your friend, oh my God, you're terrible and that was really fat. You look this. Yeah. You say to ourselves, just yeah. And yeah. we tend to sit in front of the mirror and point out all the things we don't like about ourselves. But everyone else is, I mean, I hate to say it, but people don't look at us as closely as we think. This is it. <laughs> It's like, to a certain extent, in the nicest possible way, get over yourself a little bit because no one's really looking. No, really. No, no, really. Yeah. But the, but the minute you say, oh, look at this spot on my chin, they're all like, well, hey, let's look at that then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you point it out for sure. Yeah. So I think it, it's about the confidence. Knowing that you, um, you look better, you feel better in the colours, is, is really helpful and it, it does change the way people react towards you especially especially in business um you know I work with a lot of businesses I did actually work with a firm of solicitors um a few yeah. years ago yes yeah we did a lot of a what lot of reason what was the kind of rationale behind getting um, I, I I met one of the um one of them networking and she came along to me and then gradually it filtered through and then we did a lot of work with the leadership team. And then we realized that so many of their staff had been analyzed. There's another local company, actually, as well, that I've worked with. That we um, then, that, that I think the woman who did their PR approached the local paper. And there was a whole piece about it, about us working together right. to raise their vis visibility. Because that's what happens, especially in a networking arena. It's great. Black, if, if it suits you, great. However, <coughs> when networking it can often be a sea of black so if you are somebody there standing in a color you will instantly become more visible which then means that people associate the fact that you're raising your visibility with well you must be okay at what you do because you want to be seen you become yeah. more memorable so all of these things sort of lift you up so when someone says oh I need to, I need someone to deal with um, you know I I need a new solicitor then people are going to think oh, Catherine I remember her I we can only think stood, of, stood out in a crowd yeah exactly exactly so you know we, we tend to have memory of two or three people from every industry right. so if you're one of the people that just comes into people's minds then you're going to get referred so it, it is very much a business base it's it's very much part of your your brand mm. and we spend huge amounts of money on getting the website right getting your business cards tweaked all right yeah and if we're not in line with that it sort of all collapses because and uh cliche alert um people do buy people if you do, yeah and you're not aligned with that it's not authentic then it's going to sort of start to fall apart people think well who what, what's the real you yeah there's a disconnect and people yeah. kind of then are a bit suspicious because they're like hang on a second yeah that's why you know, it's like that yeah. doesn't match up with that, and now I feel, yeah, I feel yeah. disconcerted. Sure so I'm going to yeah. go to this person over here where it all, and that's you know, we we know that from from dealing with people with social media. You know, your social media needs to line up with everything else. But the bit that a lot of people forget is you are the centre yeah. of that. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So so let's talk about. You've obviously been in business for I think you said 13 years. Yeah. How's it been? Highs, lows, everything in between, or actually has it been quite have you been fortunate to have been a bit sort of like all a bit level and no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Who is what is that oh, unicorn sorry. that you see? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no. Um for the first sort of ten years at least, um, I still kept another job because right. I was um, I was a single mum. My girls are grown up now. Yeah. Um but at the time, I needed that stable income, so I had another job. And so I worked ridiculous hours building this and the other job and then gradually sort of got that down. And then, uh, again, another great decision. During COVID, I was like, man, you only get one life. I don't want to do it anymore. So I got rid of the job and jumped into this full time. So it took me a good 10 years to do it. Um, and yeah, and since then, you know, there's been a few little sort of hiccups along the way, but over certainly this year, and I will I will give her a shout out. I have been working with Dawn Owen, and oh, right. he has just so many chairs in my face, Catherine. I don't know if you know Dawn well, but I know you've been on her podcast. Yeah. 
um yeah it, it, but she's really just helped me get that consistency of okay. right yeah you've just, you just got to keep moving forward and also i i think i don't know whether it's it's a, a gender thing or what but accepting and being able to say i'm really good at what yeah. I'm, I'm really good and yeah. i felt that a bit like a bit sort of awkward about saying that before now yeah. but i can just come out and and say it um and I'm established in my career. So now it's, it's, I just had my best month ever. Um, Congratulations. So Amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. So it, I am very, very confident that the business is just going to keep growing and growing and growing. Um, I, I tend to work a lot with existing clients because mm -hmm. style, color and style. Yes, you don't have to have your color analyzed again. You don't have to have your style analyzed again. Some people are comfortable and confident moving and sort of evolving themselves other people need me to do that right okay let's just move you on a little bit let's just keep because yeah, okay you, can, you know we've all come across people who started in 1980 and still look like they're stuck in 1980 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think for all of us we need to look quite current and contemporary yeah. that is one of my real strengths is going right I'm going to take you from here to here I think so, that's something I've really struggled with and mm -hmm. still to a certain extent struggle with is you know got to my 30s, had two children, dressed for comfort and practicality because, you know, had sick all over me all the time and, you know, baby poo and all that sort of thing. And then and then came out of that and kind of went, I don't really know where I sit in, like, which shops am I shopping in? What, what am I, what clothes am I supposed to be wearing? Like, I kind of lost, not my identity, that's, that's a bit of a kind of strong word, but I lost the ability to figure out what I liked what I didn't like what what I was supposed to be wearing as a late 30s early 40s woman you know what's appropriate what's not appropriate kind of thing and yeah. I just kind of got a bit discombobulated so it's almost stopped shopping yes so I was like I just it, it this is too hard I don't know where I'm supposed to go like I don't want to go into you know Laura Ashley it, no. it still exists I don't even know if it still exists <laughs> you know but also I'm too old for new look and river island you know yeah. so so yeah. it, it was really hard and I think I still to a certain extent struggle often I buy things because there's a need yeah not because I I'm like oh I'm gonna go and treat myself to something new mm -hmm. it's very much oh I need a new dress for that event or oh, I could do with a new suit so I'll go and get one. you know yeah. and I'd like to transition into that space of actually getting more joy out of that and feeling and I think that's why the red suit was quite pinnacle because it was like, I actually felt great in it. I had so many compliments and I was so glad I wore it. Yeah. I may yeah. never wear it again. <laughs> wear it all the time. Again, that's <laughs> enough. It's cost you that yeah. much. So the more you wear it, the cost per wear comes down. So keep yeah. wearing it. Um, I'm a, you know, that's a, a great way of being sustainable. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. I speak to a lot of, a, a lot of, especially women who do get, we have different stages in our lives where we do sort of, drift away from who we are or our needs change yeah things i really recommend to my clients because you you mentioned it there i'm going to treat myself we need clothes mm. let's let's not we, we have to wear them it's a we keep warm in them but b it's illegal to be walking around yes, the street. Can't be naked. So, wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so i always recommend that my clients set up a budget they have a clothes budget right okay you know, you, if you budget for your food or your electric or any of those, put a food, uh, put a clothes budget in as well. Yeah. And that way it stops it being um, a barrier to either spending more because you're a quality woman with a quality business. So, again, that's another reason why the cheaper shops aren't going to work for you. you. We subconsciously can can sort of see whether clothes are quality or yeah. not just by the cut of them yeah so if you're turning up in cheap clothes people can people see that they don't realize that that's what they're doing mm -hmm. but we are like clocking we clock such shoulder line to see whether people are have got sort of authority and we scanning quickly just it it comes back from the friend or foe days where we just right. used to look at someone so it's 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 that kind of thing so having a budget enables you to put quality on your wardrobe for me it stops me buying the crap. Yeah. It's like, oh, another vest top, I'll have that. So it's like, all quid. Yeah, I'll have it. Yeah. I do not do that anymore because I like to see my budget. I like to be able to go, oh, I'm going to spend on that. Yeah. That's I'm going to buy six. Really I'm like, oh, I love this. Yeah. yeah. So I do recommend that, um, definitely. Okay. 
So take me back to the kind of maybe the challenging parts of having had a business over the last 13 years. What do you think you've learned from them, if anything? Like what, what made you move through them rather than saying, do you know what, I can't do this, this is too hard, I'm not, I'm not carrying on. Like what do you think kind of compelled you to keep going? Bloody mindedness. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, you know, I could have, you know, as a career in accountancy, mm -hmm. I could have earned a lot more money than I'm earning now. Yeah. It's never been about the money. I've never seriously considered giving it in, giving it up. A couple of times I thought, oh my gosh, I seem to be working a lot. My life could be a lot easier. But, you know, there's there's a lot, I, a lot I've learned. But I think the crux of it is, um, it's about the people. I've built an amazing community of clients around me. I I really, I just really like them. Uh, the stronger I get in my brand, you know, I suppose the main thing I'd say, there's, there's four points. I did a, I did a, um, a talk last week and I came up with four points. Yeah. First one is, is be yourself, be unique. So the further into my brand I've got, when I started out, although I knew who I was, I very much tried to be right. Well, I don't know where I'm going to niche, so I'm just going to appeal to everybody, mm -hmm. um, and that was fine. And it started my business, but the more I've got into being more Jane and being very much me, the more some people will go, "Whoa, no, she's not for me." It's like a definite repel or attract kind yeah. of situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now I've got a fantastic community of people that I really like because they've come to me. They really like, they're incredibly loyal. Um, I always go to them first if I have a need for something. Um, mm -hmm. My earrings are made by a client. You know, oh, the, right. but yeah, my, my glasses are from a, a, a client who's an optician. My belt is from a client. So as if I can, I will go to my clients first. Yeah. Um, so community is hugely important. And my networking community, I never thought I'd love networking as much as I do. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I found it a bit more difficult going back to after you know after online networking yeah but I just really enjoy being with people and building those relationships yeah I think um the next thing is is to be brave mm -hmm. I have I was always taught and always did play it safe so when I was growing up don't go to uni train to be an accountant don't do this get married so I was sort of very much trained to be safe and then so it became I would do the safe things yeah um and the, the better the less safe I am the harder the path I take the better the results are who knew really so I yeah if I take the easy way it it's not the best way for me so I have learned that sometimes I do do easy ways yeah, yeah. but if I go for the slightly harder route that's where I seem to shine and be able to push through. So it is about being brave and listen to my intuition and, and sort of and do that. And then the final one that I did come up with, which does make me laugh, and I still have a, a real trouble with this one, is do it now. Yeah. I have a terrible tendency to wait. I won't do it till I've got all my ducks in a row. Until yeah. I've done this. I can't do yeah. that. My ducks are always going to be wavy. They're always going to be all over the place. So Life's just, messy. Is, yeah. And the sooner that we acknowledge that and move through it, regardless of the mess, yes, you know, the more, I suppose, the less dissatisfied you're going to be, because yeah. ultimately you see all these kind of, and I think social media has a lot to answer for in so many ways, but one of them being that there's all these like perfectly curated homes and lives, and oh, I, I you know, we have a five a.m. club, and you know, I, I have like the ideal morning. I'm yeah. like my morning is absolute chaos on a daily basis. I have two children that are in primary school and, you know, it, it's just, it's what it is. And sometimes my house is a mess and sometimes my desk is a mess, you know, and I can either beat myself up or I can go, do you know what? This is life. Like my, yeah. my desk is not a show home. My home is not a show home. Exactly. It's lived in and we are human beings. Someone, someone came up with a really cool phrase. She didn't come up with it, but she heard it. It was, it was, basically along the lines of you're a human being, not a human doing. And the sooner that you acknowledge that, you know, you're not here to just constantly be doing things, you know, being perfect all the time, having everything figured out, you know, like, like I said, life's messy. And yeah. actually we need to embrace that rather than striving for perfectionism, never really achieving it. 
Exactly. And don't you find that when people are like that, you actually want to be with them more. I find I want to be with the people who are a bit messy because I'm like, oh, hey, I've found my people. Anyone who's too perfect, I'm feeling a bit, oh, it's okay. yeah. I'm not because I am not. It's always a little bit. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of that in the legal profession, this yeah. whole sort of like, oh, no, I am very serious and everything I do is on the money and it's perfect. And, you know, God forbid I actually show my personality. And I got to the point where I just couldn't squash myself anymore. Yeah. I, I had a, I've, I've mentioned this on the hide and speak before, but I had a, a kind of mock interview with one of the training principals from when I was a training, a trainee solicitor. And he basically told me to sit on my hands because I was gesticulating too much and it was distracting. And you know, when some, some, when somebody says something to you and it really sticks. Yeah. And of course, you know, when you're in early twenties, yeah. and you're not the kind of you're you're being mentored almost you of course you're yeah. going to listen to that and that really stuck for ages yeah. and then I was like a few years down the line I think actually it, I mean it was a good few years down the line I was like hang on a second why did I pay attention to that that's bonkers if you don't like who I am why would I want to be around you, <laughs> you know, why am I why am I pretending to be someone I'm not it's really weird and I just got to the point where I was like I can't actually do this anymore because it's soul destroying I mean yeah. to just be who I am and if people don't like it then there's nothing I can do about that I'm not a bad person I'm not offensive I hope you know I'm not rude I don't rub people up the wrong way generally. I think I'm quite kind and friendly and personable. And if you don't like that, I can't do anything about that. But I can't no. spend my life sitting on my hands because you don't like how animated I am when I speak. You know, when you find those people that love you for, for that or just, you know, just like who you are regardless, it's, it's a whole different ball game, right? It's, it's like yes. people. Like, yes. Where are you all? Yes, <laughs> you know? I know. I know. And I, I do feel that we, we're entering an age where that is more acceptable. Mm. You know, I, again, training back in the day, so many as an accountant back then, we were very much put into our little boxes mm. and this is what you do. And, yeah. you know, breaking through as a woman back in the 80s as well, you really had to sort of, well, hey, you know, uh, fend off advances from every mm. <laughs> everywhere you went. Yeah. Um, but also just keep to your your path because yeah. you you did want to sort of keep your head down and progress whereas now I think we're allowing more freedom well we're not allowing it actually we're taking more freedom yeah. we're going hang on what was I doing yeah. um, and we're all going no I've had enough I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. done you know because if you think about the fact that you don't I was going to say like but it's not necessarily strong as like and don't like but there are some people that you just are naturally drawn to and some people that you're not. So everybody's going to be the same. So so not everyone is going to want to work with everybody. So you can either just be yourself and hope that in being yourself, you find the people who would want to work with you. Yeah. Or you pretend to be someone you're not and feel completely dissatisfied anyway and probably put people off because they're like, there's something about you that there's a disconnect there and you're not. I just don't feel like you're being who, who you really are. Yeah. And I just think, you know, it's life's too short, right? It, it really is. You know, it really is too short. I know that's another cliche, but, you know, you've got to grab these days and you've got to make them happen. And it, it just reminded me, I've been, I've got managed to get back into um, fitness this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on it. I've gone back to the gym. I've fallen back in love with the gym, with oh, certain things. I, I really love it. And I, um, I've been going, <laughs> I've been doing a live. I come out of the gym. And I do a quick little video, pop it on my Insta stories. Right. The amount of people, women actually, who go, oh, that's inspired me. I go to the gym as well. And the messages I get, I get more messages about that than when I post something, yeah. something sensible about colour. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to the gym. And it, it's, it's just finding those common bonds that yes. you know draw you all together so i did do a live on linkedin dawn may dawn's like go on you must do it on linkedin so i did one the other day <laughs> but somehow i have i have a bit of a i don't know i have a bit of a thing with linkedin at the moment i think it's because i'm not i don't hang out on here enough i need to hang out more so i'm hoping and that well no i'm not hoping i'm committing that now i will yeah do yeah i think i think this is it i think you're either a linkedin person or you're not yeah. I tend to spend more time on LinkedIn as a social media platform than I do in any of the others, simply because that's just the 
that was what I started out with when I launched yeah. the business two and a half years ago and it seems to have worked so I haven't really changed it but was it your live I think I saw where you actually acknowledged the fact that Dawn had said to you you need yeah. to more live so you were like this is me doing a live because Dawn said I had to do one and I just got out of the gym <laughs> yeah yeah sorry I loved it I was like yeah I love that part of me yeah. went oh you go to the gym I'm so lazy <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got three young children I've got grown-up children I went with one of my daughters this morning so I haven't right got... okay yeah so th this is my excuse I'm sticking to it although again you know in my head I, I was like oh, I don't have time and someone said to me you do have time you're just not prioritizing it Oh, sorry. No, he's just hate that. I don't have time. I have time to sit and watch three hours of David Beckham, <laughs> but I don't have time for other stuff. Do you know, watch Yellowstone for four hours a night? I don't have time to go to the gym. Do you know, it's funny though, isn't it? It's like actually, you could still binge watch Yellowstone, but you could do it from the gym. So you could just yeah. do both. We could, you know, both, right? But we no, I know. We we have this, and it, you know, it it is just about priorities and about where we sit and. Mm -hmm said to me would we be able to tell from your diary what your priority is and you can tell because all my exercise classes are booked in for the next week so that is definitely my priority um and work is as we were mentioning before we came we came on live work next week is a bit over prioritized um but that is because then i've made up a word i hope you like my word okay i'm going on nanternity nanternity <gasps> <laughs> I love that. How long are you going to be on nanternity for? Well, I'm still working, um, but I'm not actually seeing clients face to face because right. my daughter lives just outside Manchester. Okay. So um, she's. I'm, I'm having four weeks. I'm having two weeks before the baby's due and two weeks after right. because that that seems the optimum time of when he'll where he'll arrive. Yeah. So I don't want to be in my studio analysing someone and then go. Sorry, I've got to go to the MCU. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see yourself out. Um, so I've said no face to face. So I am working, but it's all online stuff. So I've got right. like shopping and things like that booked in. Um, but yeah, I decided to call it nanternity because it's not a word. I like that. Do you know, just going back to Dawn's question about um, what are you prioritizing? We can, we'll be able to tell from your diary. Yeah, my it's all work, literally. You know, I, I actually am I'm part of the NatWest Accelerator, which is a six months kind of paid for program. And um, they did a time management session on Wednesday of this week, but he called it self-management, not time management, because he said it's not about time, it's about managing yourself. Yeah. And there were so many takeaways. I mean, I time block, right? But I clearly don't do it hugely successfully because I'm not time blocking lunch or breaks or self-care time. It's all how much can I squeeze in to build my business on a daily basis between you know half nine and half five and it was just fascinating and the fact that he even just called it self-management was like mind-blowing to me because I just suddenly went gosh he's so right isn't he that it's not yeah. about time it's about you as a person and what you're choosing so it's interesting isn't it we're, we're getting down to the last 10 minutes what are the kind of what are your top tips for someone who just doesn't know where to start and maybe maybe is a little bit nervous about perhaps coming to see you they don't quite feel ready to take that step what would you say to them about whether that's starting the process of kind of looking at color for themselves or what would you hope that someone would perhaps work through before they come and see you like what what would you say I think people people do get nervous about it. People are nervous that I'm going to say you need to get rid of all of your wardrobe. But there are ways to sort of make things work. I think it's experiment with colour. Interestingly, mm -hmm. your, your red. I'm going to go back to your red suit yeah. because true red. And I don't. I I can't. You again. You can't see on photos. Um, yeah. Light red. It's very difficult to see actual colour on photos because yeah. how many times have you ordered something and it's come and it's a completely different shade to what you expected? Yeah. Um. But true red. So one of the three primary colors so red yellow blue true red has no yellow or blue in it so it will suit all skin tones so that is a universal color so if you are scared of color <laughs> go right in there with red just go for red, <laughs> yes. well, red yeah. um, but if you think of richard branson is uh he is a big sort of proponent of using as much as he can so he he deliberately chose virgin red to be a color that will suit all skin tones so yeah. and red, it's the red uniform yeah so the uniform was everyone would look good in it whereas not everyone looks good in black 
or maybe as the green not everyone looks good in as the green oh. so it's yeah it's it's all about the psychology of color so i would i would just sort of if you if you don't want to be ana analyzed yet uh follow a few people just work out about the the science of it um I would suggest that you don't try and use the um, what colour are my veins? That doesn't work. Is that or, a thing? That's a thing. People apparently, if you've got blue veins, it's one thing. Green veins, it's another. I don't know. That doesn't work. Um, I have a kind of turquoise and purple. Well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You're dead. Green and purple, so I don't know. It's all a bit strange. Yeah. Um, and, and the filters don't work on on the screens. Right. They just to start to experiment. Add some color in. So you, for you, head to toe black. Add some, add a different color in. Add a, a, a pop of color. Um, just start getting you any color is better than no color. Right. Yeah. In my, in my world, but just experiment and and sort of just see where you feel comfortable. Um, ask for ask for feedback from your friends if you want beware that they may have a subjective opinion if they yeah. like the color they're going to think it looks good on you um and sort of just i know i've just said about not taking photographs but sometimes build up a library of photographs that's what i'm working with them um, i've got a cohort of 13 clients we're just working with at the moment and one of their tasks this month is to take a photo every day of their outfit so that they can see where their optimum lengths are and things like that so that they can we've been through it all but Sometimes we drift off a little bit. It's like, well, actually, even just taking an inch off a skirt can make a huge difference. Yeah. So those kinds of things. But just start with scarves or right. you know, or a, a beanie or something that if you feel a little bit exposed, you can just take it off. Take it off. Um, yeah. You know, don't go straight in necessarily unless you've got the personality with the bright red suit because once you're in that, you're in it. <laughs> you've yeah, got to go it's so hiding in a bright red suit. <laughs> Whereas if you've got a red scarf on, you can go, oh, that's a bit much. I'll take it off. And yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm not scary anyway. Come and see me. No, absolutely. Yeah, indeed. God. So if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that? And what's the best um, way? You can message me on LinkedIn. That's um, I, I will be hanging out more on LinkedIn now. Um, look on the House of Colour website. I'm on there. Um, yeah. You can email me, jane.brook at houseofcolour.co.uk. So everyone gets in touch with me. I don't know whether this happens to you or whether it's the amount of platforms that people can get in touch. I'm like, right, where did that message come from? Was it Instagram? Yeah. Was it WhatsApp? Was it Facebook? Was it where is it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, no. This self-management chap basically said, reduce your modes of communication to three. Okay. Any three, but it has to only be three. And if you have others, where possible, put, th put out of offices on. So it specifically says, thank you for your message. This is an unmonitored inbox. Please get in touch with me here and push them to one of your three. He okay. said, because there's so many distractions. Yeah. I'll bore you with this story, but basically he was saying that... Um, you know, 100 years ago, the only methods of communication were really letter, face to face, and um, t I think it was telegram, he said, or telephone, possibly. 25 years ago, you know, we had phones, um, po possibly email, that sort of thing. Now, there are literally hundreds of ways to communicate with people, you know, apps, social media, WhatsApp, Telegram, you know, the Telegram app, phone, text message, email, you know, there's so many. He said, you, you can be so distracted all day, every day, just from all of the ways to communicate with people. And he said, so just reduce them to three you know, and push everyone to those three. I was like, oh my God, that's revolutionary, but also makes me feel a bit stressed. I don't yes. know why. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh my gosh! <laughs> and I was saying to someone, I was actually we'd done the time well, the self management, as I say, workshop, and I had my laptop open, and I was working on my emails, and then I got distracted by my phone, so I looked on my phone, I got distracted by another app on my phone, and then I checked my emails on my phone, despite the fact it was on my laptop in front of me, and I could see I had no new emails. I still went to the app. To I was like, what am I doing? Like this is so yeah. bizarre. But it was just so natural to just go to certain apps on my phone to check. Yeah, yeah, we do. And I've tried to, uh, yeah, phones are just a black hole, aren't they? I need right. to, yeah. It's well, so like, since then, my mobile phone is over there. I can see on my watch if someone's phoning me and I can see if I need to go and answer it or not. Otherwise, yeah. everything is on my screen. So I can see my WhatsApp's on my screen. 
I can still see my emails, everything else is here. So right. I'm just focused here. Otherwise, I'm really oh, yes. Yeah, it's a distraction. I've got my phone down there and I can see in the yeah. corner and it's on do not disturb. So nothing will come on the screen. So I don't even know why I keep glancing. <laughs> It's like some kind of, again, addiction, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. What's going to happen? Who's going to get in touch with me? Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody important in the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I could carry on talking for ages, but it's been really interesting to hear about your journey and obviously the the concept and the I think the importance yeah. from a <laughs> confidence perspective of you know actually looking at this stuff because i something you said earlier about hiding people wear black either to hide or you know because it suits them or whatever but there have been occasions where i've worn black because i'm hiding yes then so yeah it was interesting what you said so thank you so much for joining me it's been a pleasure oh i've loved it i could like i could just keep on talking i'm having a great time I've learned. <laughs> awesome well just just remind us of your website and your email address and then we will um we'll head off and... uh, the website is hasthecolor.co.uk and just search my name jane brook um, my email address is jane.brook at hasthecolor.co.uk amazing thank you very much jane you. have a good rest of your afternoon and you thank you